Hey everybody, what's up? I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from the Black Wealth Boot Camp, and I had to talk about this uh, story that I just saw. Uh, there's a young brother by the name of Joe Anderson, uh, who's 26 years old. Uh, he was once a wide receiver with the Chicago Bears for a couple of years, and and like a lot of uh, great athletes that go to the NFL, uh, he was he found out NFL doesn't stand for National Football League; it stands for Not for Long. And in fact, if you can find the right letters to go with the acronym, uh, and you look at this new Will Smith movie, uh, it also stands for you will probably have a concussion and severe brain damage at some point in your life if you play long enough. That doesn't go with NFL, but you get the point. Uh, basically, uh, one of the problems that we have in the black community is that uh, many, many black male athletes or black males, period, uh, overinvest. They're tempted to overinvest in sports and entertainment. Um, not that these areas can't be lucrative, but unfortunately, a lot of guys really think that that's the only way they can get ahead in this world, which is really a horrible, horrible, destructive myth. Um, and it's, it's fed to us by entertainment, uh, predominantly controlled by whites, uh, where black male athletes and entertainers are held up as uh, beacons and icons of success in the black community. When the most successful people I know are people who own their own businesses and people who have an education. Now, um, one of the now here's the interesting thing about Anderson's story, uh, because he got put out of the NFL, and uh, I don't know what. I don't know much about him as a person. I don't know what else he can do, but uh, he's been trying to get back into the NFL, and he's standing outside. He made the media because he was standing outside the Houston Texans stadium with a sign that said, not homeless, but starving for success. We'll run routes for food, whatever it takes, underdog, believe, hungry. And, uh, you know, and then he mentions that he was praying for it. He's pleased. Uh, he's pleasing God at the end of the day and things like that. So he's praying to get ahead and he's holding a sign begging uh, the white man to give him an opportunity to run and jump and catch football for a living. Um which is okay, it's fine, alright, well here's the thing, uh, number one, I'm not going to be hard on the brother, I'm not trying to be hard on him, he's 26, uh, when I was 26, uh, I saw the world differently myself, but given that I'm a little older, maybe I can help him understand certain things uh, that he might want to understand, but learn about the world, uh, number one, um, as a collective, the white man really doesn't give a damn about you, uh, it does not mean that white people are bad and evil inherently or every white person is bad. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about something called systematic structural racism, which basically has created a construct within which whites are up here, blacks are down here. And so uh, basically, uh, you know, the, that, you know, your black ass might be allowed into certain situations because you had tremendous athletic ability. But once you get to the point where you're trying to play professional sports, there are this many opportunities and that many people trying to get these opportunities. So basically it's what the, what you call a, uh, a buyer's market, meaning that the NFL teams have all the power. And uh, like E-40, the rapper E-40 had, used to have a song called They'll Find a New Nigga Next Year. And what that means is that because the, the NFL average NFL career span is really, really short, two to three years, uh, that's due to the fact that uh, they pretty much churn through black men, like uh, like athletic and economic prostitutes. They churn through them. They'll use them up for two or three years. Uh, when your body starts breaking down from all the painkillers, all the hits to the head, all the other things that you have to go through to survive in the NFL, they just go find another young guy who can come in with fresh legs and a fresh body, and they use him next, right? Just like cattle, like cattle or pigs or chickens. It's sort of just going through a, a, a just going through a system, going through a process, pieces of meat. That's really kind of what you are, unfortunately. Now, not every athlete falls in this category. Some guys really use the system to their advantage, which I think is great. I mean, in fact, if I had been a good enough athlete to play in the NFL, I would have been tempted by this too. Uh, but I will say that the best thing that ever happened to me was when I got to college and found out that I wasn't a good enough athlete to play sports at the college level because uh, ultimately – media brainwashes black men from an early age to make them truly see themselves as nothing more than athletes or entertainers that that's your role in society uh, I remember when I was in college at the University of Kentucky now we were big on basketball and I remember working in the basketball dorm and everything around was basketball 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 I didn't see nothing around on, on no academics um, I didn't see anything on the walls. I saw murals of basketball, basketball, basketball. I saw nothing about, you know, what your life is going to be after basketball, what your life is going to be outside of basketball. I just saw nothing but basketball. And that makes sense from the perspective of the university 
because they're making millions of dollars from this this uh, athletic endeavor. So it's in their interest to get you brainwashed and hooked on nothing but sports so that they can get the most out of you. And then what would happen is some of the guys would do okay because they would have a plan B. Some of them would go to the NBA. But then some of those guys would just end up right back in the hood, sitting literally sitting on the corner with a liquor bottle because they have no purpose outside of their sport. They, they, they don't know what they're going to do with their life if they're not dribbling a basketball in front of a stadium full of white people or catching a football in front of a stadium full of white people or getting paid by a, a white man who puts them in the stadium now um here's the thing this is not a racial thing it's entirely um and i'm not really trying to sort of make this out like oh white people are just bad no really they're kind of doing what what a lot of people would do if you had a group if you were able to successfully brainwash other people to believe that it's their number one purpose in life to serve you um, the biggest uh, uh, the biggest example of this was uh, I remember Vince Young, who was a great player. He played for um, uh, uh, he won the national championship and he ended up going uh, to to uh, I think it, did he play for the Houston Texans? You you guys probably know this, but but Vince I remember um, he played for oh my goodness I can't remember who he played for in college, but I know he won the national championship. He was a great player. And I remember seeing Texas, University of Texas. Duh. Um, and, and I remember Vince, uh, you know, when he, after he won his championship in this brilliant game where he played just so amazing. I remember he um, was on the cover of ESP in the magazine. And if I'm not mistaken, I saw this headline because I'm a sports fan. I read these magazines and, I, and it was on my doorstep and I read it. And I remember the quote was that it, it had a big picture of him. And it said, I was born to play quarterback at the University of Texas. Right at that moment, right at that moment, I felt so sorry for that brother. Because I said, wow, this man has literally been led to believe that his whole purpose in life is to go serve this big white university that ain't even paying his family for his labor. They're earning millions of dollars off of him, not giving his mama nothing except maybe a couple scraps, maybe a little car or five grand or something like that. And he really thinks that that's his purpose, to serve them, that that's all he's here to do. And I said, I hope football works out for him because if it doesn't, he's going to be lost. He'll have nothing. And lo and behold, you know, years later, you saw where they were worried that Vince was suicidal and all this other stuff because uh, no teams wanted him. Uh, I don't know how he's doing financially, but I don't think he's doing very well. Um, and, and so my theory on this is not that black men have to walk away from sports. I mean, we are um, the most athletically gifted specimens on the planet. Um, you know, and, and people won't talk about it because they don't want to talk about racism. They don't want to talk about race. They don't want to talk about slavery and, and history. But, um, you know, we are the survivors of the Middle Passage. We went through 400 years of the worst torture uh, imaginable. We They bred us. They used to breed us like animals, take the biggest, strongest slaves and force them to make babies. And so as a result, uh, you really don't have a white version of a Shaquille O'Neal or a white version of a Reggie Bush. You don't have that and I don't care how hard other people practice that most people can never be what Reggie Bush was I know I can't be so my point here is that we have this gift from wherever it came and the guys work very very hard and they're very very smart so you take amazing athletic gifts with tremendous work ethic with tremendous intelligence and then you get these superhumans that we have in our community that can do these amazing athletic things and um, and so and that becomes a, a powerful commodity. It's worth a lot of money to a lot of people. And, you know, what's what's unfortunate is that uh, this commodity is being extracted from us uh, where the money goes to the, the rich white guys who run the NCAA, the rich white guys who run the NFL and the NBA. Uh, very little of that money is coming to the black community. And also many of our best men, our best black men are being absolutely destroyed and obliterated by a culture that focuses so much on athletics that it doesn't leave room for anything else. You have so many guys I've seen who are nothing but athletes. That's all they know how to be. They know how to play football, play football or basketball. And that's it. Don't know how to read. Never took the time to learn a skill. Don't know how to run a business. So if they can't play sports, they're done. And then even worse, the worst case scenarios are when guys get sucked into the culture of sports. You know, sometimes the culture can be very toxic, unfortunately. The culture of, of excessive womanizing, excessive alcohol and, and drug consumption, things like that. Now, you know, or now I'm not trying to say there's anything wrong with what you I'm not talking about what you do with women. I'm not judging on that. Don't don't get me wrong. What I am saying though is that, you know, when you are sleeping with everything that moves and you know, hitting liquor and weed every other day, 
and you know hanging out with people that are not good for your future you can't expect to have a good life after that <clears throat> and what happens is it starts to catch up with you when you get 27 28 29 30 31 years old then at that point all the little kids all the babies mamas they still want the same child support even though you're not playing sports no more you're not making that big money anymore so a lot of guys end up selling drugs literally uh, or getting into bad situations you know going to jail for child support because they can't afford to pay for all these kids that they were making while they were the man on the football field uh then on top of that you have the guys that get addicted to the painkillers and uh you know 40 year old men with with the knees of of 80 year olds at 39 40 years old walking around like you're 80 because your body's so broken down uh brain damage i mean brain damage galore i talked to a former nfl all pro wide receiver uh, and i asked him about the brain damage thing he said yeah he said he says you know a lot of times i can't i can't remember things he said i can't um he, he said i can't sleep i'm depressed press for no reason he said it's it's real and uh i said um i asked him to tell me more and he told me that there was a a quarterback you know who uh who played for the cowboys uh one one of the big teams one of the, one of the teams and um he said you know the guy so they walked in the guy was like hey what's up and then they were talking for a minute and then he the guy looked away and then he turned back around and he was like hey what's up like he had like he hadn't seen him like he he didn't just talk to him a couple of minutes ago and uh in fact Troy Aikman even tells stories about that where he I think it was Aikman who said uh that he asked he asked um after he got a concussion he asked the trainer if they won the game and then two minutes later he asked the trainer again did we win the game you know so what my point here is that um you know this brother out here that's begging you know for this opportunity um, I think you should go for the opportunity. I think you should be the best athlete you can be. Uh, but understand that when you are begging the white man for opportunities, what you're send what you're telling him is that um, I need to come to you because I can't do things for myself. Um, you know, you don't really see white people begging black people for anything. You don't see them begging us for opportunities. I mean, you just you know, or the whole like we'll we'll work for food kind of thing. Uh, you know, that that does not preserve your dignity. Uh, it does not make you look like a man. It makes you look very very weak. Uh, it does not make people respect you. It makes them disrespect you because they know that they can treat you any old kind of way, and you're going to tolerate it because you have nowhere else to go. You don't have a community that has your back. You don't have any other skills outside playing football or dribbling a basketball or whatever it is that you do. Um, um, uh, that's not the way to live. That's not gonna. That's not a successful life strategy. Because the other thing is too that in just a few years you'll be too old to play football. I mean, the, the NFL is so crazy that even at 26, you, uh, you're about three, four years away from being considered an old player. You know, so um, you know, I would just say if you want to go play the sport, play it. But remember, it's a game, and little boys play games. Real men handle their business. And what does that mean? That means that, you know, when you step off the football field or when you're not playing football, you develop a skill, you learn how to run a business, you learn how to, you know, you learn some kind of trade so you can provide for a family and play the game of life at the highest levels and not just focus on throwing a football into old age that that's not a good uh, plan for yourself so that's it you know i'm not disrespecting the brother i, I don't want him you know if he, if he ever were to see this i wouldn't want him to feel bad about this but i do not i do not gain any pleasure by seeing any black man standing outside begging white people for anything this is not we are not meant to be beggars we are meant to be kings and a king does not get on his effing knees you heard me i almost cussed because i was that mad i'm dr boyce Watkins from the black wealth boot camp take care god bless i'm gone Peace.